Good day, students. Welcome to math.serve.com, where we don't just solve, we teach. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 6 to 10 of the January 2016 Algebra 2 Trick New York Regents exam. If you have any questions about the contents of this presentation or, or any Algebra 2 Trick Regents uh, question in general, just include your question in the comment section below, and we'll be glad to assist you at our earliest convenience. All right, let's take a look at number six. It says the expression square root of cube root of 27, a to the negative six, b to the third, c square is equivalent to. So uh, we're going to be using multiple properties of exponents here. So we have the third, let's change the color of that, um, the third root of uh, 27, a to the negative six, b to the third, c square. Now we're going to use the um, the nth root property of exponents to express this as a power. And at the same time, if possible, we want to try and express every single term as a power too. Okay. So 27 can it be written as a power of the product of primes. If you decompose 27, what do we have? I want to express 27 as a um, a product of primes with their respective powers, okay? Um, so three goes into 27 nine times, and then we can break down nine, three goes into nine three times. So if I wanna express this as a power of product of primes, 27 is three to the third power, okay? So let's go ahead and rewrite 27 as three to the third. Eight to the negative six is already in, in exponential format, so that's good b to the third is already in that format, so is uh, c, so c is c to the second power. Now you're going to see why I want to write each and every term of my radic hand in this format. Now using the nth root property of exponents, the third root can be written as the one-third power. Okay, now check this out. I'm now going to um, use the power of a product of powers property of exponents. That requires me to distribute this power to every single power in my parentheses. You're going to be actually multiplying the powers, okay? That is what the uh, rule says. So let's go ahead and do that here. So I'm gonna have three raised to the three times one third a raised to the negative six times one third, b raised to the three times one third, c raised to the two times one third. Okay, so that's the beauty of expressing each and every term as a power. So you can just have the exponents interact with each other and you don't have to even look at the basis. So let's go ahead and simplify that. Um, we're going to have uh, three divided by three once, so we just have three to the first power. Now over here with the a's, three goes into itself, one goes into six twice. So we have a to the negative two, we'll address the negativity of this power in a second. And then uh, with the b scenario, the threes divide out just to one, as was with the three here. So b to the first power. And then how about the c's? No cancellation happens. So how do you multiply an integer and defraction? You express the integer as a fraction and you multiply across, okay? Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, the product is two uh, over three. I see you just got big all of a sudden, I don't know how that happened. So let's uh, put it in a lower case. So we have C raised to the, multiply across two thirds, okay? Now, um, if you look at our options, there's no option that has a term with a negative exponent. So we have to use the reciprocal property of exponents to address the negativity of this a term here. Okay, so we have three b c to the two thirds over. Now what happens is that if a term has a negative exponent, you switch the position of that term either to the numerator or the denominator, depending on where it was initially. Since a is in the numerator, it switches to the denominator. And when you do that switch, what happens is that you, you invert or you reverse the sign. So since this is negative, it now becomes positive. Okay? So let's look at our options. 3bc to the 2 third over a squared. Answer is option number one. 
All right, let's take a look at number seven. It says the amount of money in an account can be determined by the formula A equals P E to the RT, where P is the initial investment, R is the annual interest rate, and T is the number of years the money was invested. What is the value of, five, of a $5,000 investment after 18 years if it was invested at 4% interest compounded continuously? Okay, so we're given the formula here, A, is equal to P e to the RT, which is nice. So we just have to make sure that we make accurate use of this formula, okay? So the starting amount, the principal P is 5,000. Um, R is the rate. So this is where our students make mistake. 4% has to be expressed in decimal form, okay? So 4% is 4, percent is 4 over 100, or point 0, 0.04. You move the decimal point uh, forward twice because you have two zeros down here. In your calculator, you can put 4 over 100 or 0 0.04. That's fine as long as you don't put it in this format. That's incorrect. How long is this money invested? T is 18 years, so T is equal to 18. Um, so we have all the ingredients that we need to find the missing piece, which is A, the final amount, okay? So A is unknown. Okay, let's go ahead and um, uh, calculate this. We're gonna be using our calculators to finish this up momentarily, but let's set it up first, okay? So A is equal to 5,000. 5,000 E to the uh, 0 0.04 times 18, okay? So you need to be able to make accurate use of your calculator in order to get this problem correct, or else you just, it's easy to um, get this problem incorrect into incorrect entry of your, um, of your problem. All right, so let's go ahead and enter it. So we have 5,000, and then E is next to LN. So second function LN gives you access to the E number. So raised to the 0 0.04 times 18, make sure you group these two in the parentheses or else you have a grouping error, okay? So as you can see, our answer is 1072.17. 1072.17. So you know, basically doubled your money, then some. Answer is option number four. All right, let's take a look at number eight. It says, what is x over x minus one minus one over two minus two x expressed as a single fraction? All right, so let's go ahead and combine these two algebraic fractions. x minus one minus one over two times, I mean, two minus two x. So remember um, from arithmetic that if you want to add two numbers, the denominators must be identical. The same applies to algebraic fractions. The denominator expressions must be identical before you can combine the two fractions. So to enable us to determine the LCD, what we're going to do is factor out the denominators where possible. So x over x minus 1 minus 1 over. Now you notice there's a 2 that's common in these two terms here. So factor that out. 2 times 1 minus x. Okay, 1 minus x, x minus 1. Are they the same quantity? Does subtraction commute like multiplication and addition? The answer is no. So you've got to be really careful here. But there is a trick we can use. Um, so note, a minus b is equal to negative b minus a. So if you reverse a difference of terms, what you're going to do is you have to introduce that negative component there, okay? So if you factor out a negative from the difference of two terms, then uh, what happens is that the order switches because the negative becomes positive and the positive becomes negative, all right? So let's do that here. We're gonna take advantage of that trick. X minus one minus one over so I'm going to factor out a negative, so place it right here. And then if you factor out a negative, these two can switch around because x becomes negative. I'm sorry, x becomes positive and 1 becomes negative. Bam. Now we have minus, minus, so we can multiply those two signs. 
x over x minus 1 minus n minus is a plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. Now, in order for you to combine these two fractions, the denominators must be identical. We already have this in factored form. Now, what's missing here to make it the same as this? It's missing a 2. Okay, so how do we address this difference? You multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Is this a not correct way of writing it? No, you have to put the parentheses, okay? Or else that means it's just, I'm doubling just the x. The parentheses means I'm doubling the entire uh, expression, which is what we're doing, okay? So now that we have identical denominators, let me write it in the same color. So we have 2x divided by 2 times quantity x minus 1 plus 1 over 2 times quantity x minus 1. Now I can combine them, okay? So I'm going to have 2x plus 1 divided by um, 2 times quantity x minus 1. Our answer is option number 3. All right, so it says uh, number 9. Number 9 reads, what is the total number of points of the intersection of the graphs of the equations 2x squared minus y squared equals 8 and y equals x plus 2? So we have a system of equations here, a quadratic and a conic. So the question is, how many times does this line right here intersect this conic section right here? What kind of conic is this? If you think about it, this basically is a um, hyperbola. And then we have a line, and then the question is, how many times can this line, does this line intersect this hyperbola right here? So of course, we can solve this graphically, but I'm going to show you how to do this algebraically. So we have a system of, e of equations. That's how I'm going to solve this. I'm going to solve it as a system. As indicated earlier, you can do this graphically too. So that's equation one. Equation two is y is equal to x plus two. So I'm going to solve this by substitution. But the nice thing about this is the resultant equation I have, I might not have to do it all the way. Okay, remember, I'm looking for the number of solutions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute x plus two into y in equation one. So substitute x plus two into y. In equation one. So I'm going to end up with 2x squared minus quantity x plus 2 squared equals 8. Now take a look at what we have here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a quadratic equation. Okay, so the number of solutions I have basically tells me the number of intersections that they are. Do I have to solve a quadratic equation to determine the number of solutions? The answer is no. There's a neat little trick that we can use, but before we do that, we have to place this equation in standard form. Okay, so we have 2x squared minus x plus 2 times x plus 2 equals 8. And then we have 2x squared. Be careful with this minus here. Okay, so let's distribute that. We have x squared. Uh, plus 2x, coil it out first, outer, inner, last, plus 4, equals, equals 8. Simplify further, we have 2x squared minus x squared plus 4x plus 4. Um, equals 8. Uh, then we distribute the uh, negative, so we have 2x squared minus x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 8. Now we're going to set it equal to 0, okay, for the standard form. So we have 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared minus 4x. And then when we add, I'm sorry, subtract 8 from both sides because we want to equal to 0 uh, minus 12 equals zero, okay? So this is the resulting uh, quadratic equation. Now, do I have to solve it? 
the answer is no. I'm going to use a shortcut, and that is the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant can tell me the number of solutions. Do I have um, zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions? Okay, so remember if your discriminant, your discriminant, um, discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, that's the radical of your quadratic formula. If it's um, equal to zero, we have a double root, basically like one solution is the same. Uh, if it's less than zero, we have no solution. And if it's greater than zero, we have two distinct solutions. So let's look at what the discriminant is here. So from this problem, we can see that a is one, b is negative four, and c is negative 12. So our discriminant is going to be b squared, negative four squared, minus four a c. Okay. Or AC. All right, let's simplify this. So we're going to end up with uh, 16 minus, okay, minus times minus is plus, 4 times 12 is, wait a minute, it's 48. Okay, and then we add these two together, you have 64. Now, since 64 is greater than 0, guess what? We have two distinct solutions distinct solutions. They are actually going to be real. Uh, they're going to be rational because this is a perfect square. Okay, so distinct solutions, that's what we really care about. So our answer is that we have two intersections uh, as solutions. Um, when with the, you graph this line and this uh, hyperbola on the same coordinate system, it's going to intersect twice. All right, let's take a look at question number 10, the last in this review installment. It says, uh, given the sequence, uh, x, x plus 2, x plus 2y, which expression can be used to determine the common difference of the sequence? So the common difference formula D, let's write it down, formula, common difference D is given by a n minus, no, a n, a n, minus a n minus one. Okay, this is just the uh, symbolic way of saying you subtract a term from the term before it in order to compute the um, common difference. Okay, so examples, you can say a2, what's before a2, a1, or you can say a3, what's before a3, a2, or you can say a4, what's before a4, a3. Okay, so just take a term and subtract it from the term before Subtract the term before it from it, and that will give you a common difference, okay? So in this case, we have x, x plus y, and x plus 2y. This is a1, a1, this second term, a2, and this is a3. So we can write down the common difference in two different ways, okay? So and then we'll see which one the correct answer is. So common difference can be written as a2 minus a1, which is x plus y minus x, or it can also be written as a3 minus a2, which is x plus 2y minus the quantity x plus y. Okay, so let's see which one matches. Um, x plus 2, oh, answer is option number 2. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful to you, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very important to us. If you have any questions, don't forget to just include it in the comment section below and we'll be glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe for more of this uh, review series. More clips can be found on MarcusServe.com. Thanks again for watching. And